One of my favorite things about the springtime is listening to the birds chirp and watching them splash around in the little rain puddles. They are just so happy and the sound of their their singing just always sounds so playful to me. So in honor of our feathered friends today, we are going to whip up some fun birdhouses. Hello, sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel. It is so nice to see you all. I feel like it's been a minute since we've seen each other, but I think that's because last week I didn't get any real FaceTime with y'all. So it's good to be back. It's good to see your faces. I'm really excited about today's projects. These are going to be just some feather friend inspired birdhouses that we are going to create today. So without further ado, let's get to it. Alrighty y'all, we are gonna just jump right into these projects. We're gonna start out by painting our birdhouses. And this first one that I am painting, I am painting in the color Sandstorm, and this is a folk art chalk paint. Now I did cut all of these birdhouses out myself. Michael cut out a few and I cut out a few in the wood shop. But y'all, if you do not have access to wood cutting tools or a wood shop like I do, I saw some really darling unfinished birdhouses at both Michael's and Hobby Lobby that will work perfectly for our projects today. Okay, so I'm just going to finish painting all of these pieces and then moving on to this second birdhouse. This one I am painting in the color Dove Gray and this is also a folk art, um, a folk art craft paint here. So for one of our birdhouses, we're gonna create a cedar shake roof for it. And these little cutouts, Michael made these for me, and I think they are actually cedar, but I wasn't a fan of that reddish color. So I'm going to go over all of these with some antiquing glaze to just kind of in, uh, enhance the color and darken it up, just deepen it up a little bit. And after I get all of my pieces painted, I am going to go over all of the edges with my sanding block here to just kind of give the edges a, a slight distressed look. I don't do a whole lot of distressing on these, but I did want just a little bit here. Okay, so now we can start assembling our cute little birdhouses. I am so excited for this, y'all. So I'm going to just use a combination of wood glue and hot glue to attach these together. And I'm using the hot glue just to give us that instant hold so that I can keep working because, you know, wood glue does take a little while to set up. So I just go about assembling the sides on each of these and one thing I want to make mention is to make sure that you do get your right sides out because I put this together the first time and realized one of my sides I had put the unpainted side out so I had to take it apart and do it again so make sure that you have your right sides out because I didn't paint the the you know the inside parts of these so I'm going to go ahead and start our roof and this one's going to be the roof that has our little cedar shakes and I start by placing one on the very top in the center first and then work my way down the edges and I do this so that I can make sure everything is evenly placed and spaced out properly. Oh, 
cute is this, y'all? I love this Starling Little Birdhouse. This is one of the ones that Michael cut out, and he did such a great job getting these shapes exactly the way I wanted them. Okay, so we're going to place this atop a candlestick, and this is just a, um, a raw wood candlestick that I got at Hobby Lobby in their like wood pile section. And when I first started to do this, I wasn't sure I wanted to stain the candlestick. I thought I might want to leave it um, just the natural wood color, but I ended up not liking it, and so I do stain this. Um, I do stain this later on, but I, I did it off camera. So this little top piece I created so I would have an extra wide base to set our um, birdhouse on top of. And I cut it out kind of in this little wavy, wonky shape because we're gonna put a grapevine wreath on this and I wanted the wood cut out to be similar to the same shape as our grapevine. So here I'm just going to head and glue on the grapevine wreath and then we will sit our birdhouse right on top of that. And I do glue everything in place with hot glue. And I am using Gorilla Hot Glue here because it is a really nice, strong hot glue. I feel pretty, pretty good that this is gonna hold in place for a really long time. Now that all of our pieces are glued into place and they're um, all set up, we can start embellishing this birdhouse. And this is my favorite part. I love to just embellish these pieces. I feel like it just makes everything come alive and gives it so much more texture and just, um, whimsy to it. So I'm going to start by adding some moss to the front of this and I'm using just a mixture of green and brown moss and I was kind of going for that like bird nest look here so I do make it kind of big and a little on the messy side. And then I'll just start adding in some little tiny sprigs of greenery and a couple little flowers here and there to just give it more of that nature inspired look. And to the sides of this birdhouse, I am adding just a tiny smidge of, um, of the moss that kind of goes around, but I try to keep it pretty minimal on the sides. All right, now we're gonna move on to working on the second birdhouse for this little group. And here's where I decided I liked the stained wood versus the natural raw wood. So I did go ahead and stain these. And this is where I also went back and stained the candlestick on the birdhouse that we just finished. And I also went over this with a little bit of white antiquing wax just to give it a little more of that muted soft tone. I love how this turned out. It just gave the candlestick a really cool effect. It just definitely softened it a lot. All right, now we're going to assemble this little birdhouse, and this one is, it's a little smaller, but so darling. And um, again, Michael cut this one out for me, and I'm just assembling it the same way that we did our previous birdhouse. to give this one a little bit of different texture from our previous one so around the um, little opening I guess our birdhouse door I'm just going to um, glue this uh, <laughs> grapevine wreath into place here and then I go ahead and glue our candlestick to the base and this is the, the like the bottom part of our birdhouse and I'm gluing it to the candlestick first and then I will glue the, the um, birdhouse to the top of this base. For 
the roof on this one, we are going to just use some sticks that I had left over from our faux trees that we made a couple of weeks ago. And I just start by placing one on the very bottom and then kind of go up and all the way around down to the other side. I really love the roof on this, y'all. I think it came out so, so cute. I can't decide if I should paint, stain the ends of those or just leave them natural like that, but for now we're just gonna leave it the way it is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of moss to our grapevine wreath and then embellish it with just a little bit of bibs and, bibs and bobs of greenery pieces because I love how just adding these in gives this whole piece just a little bit of extra life. I didn't want to go too crazy with the embellishments on this one, but I did think we needed a little bit of extra moss on the roof. I just think that looks really cute. And then I added just a teeny weeny bit to the one side of this towards the back and just put in a couple of tiny little green leaves poking out there a little bit. I just think this looks really, really cute. It looks very natural and it kind of has that woodland feel to it. <laughs> what do you guys think? birdhouse I thought it would be kind of fun to just keep this one a little bit more on the simplistic side of things and so I don't do a whole lot with this one I'm gonna start of course by painting it we we're just doing so much painting in, um, <laughs> in all of these projects today but I am painting this one with that same folk art chalk paint in the color sandstorm I really like this color it's just so it's so um, earthy but neutral at the same time and a lot of different things go well with this color. A lot of other colors go well with this color, I should say. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint all of our pieces here and then I do give all of them a little bit of distressing just like we did with our last project. assembling these very much the same as we did the first ones. I'm just using some hot glue here. Since I'm making these for myself, I felt like it was okay to use the hot glue, but if I was gonna be selling these at like a craft fair or something, I would definitely be using a combination of hot glue and wood glue here, just to give it a little extra hold. But this wood glue is pretty strong stuff, so I feel confident that it's gonna hold these together just fine without you know worry of it coming apart or anything like that i've actually never had anything that i've glued together with this hot glue fall apart on me so that's a good that's a good sign <laughs> on this one we're gonna do like that cedar shake style again and I'm not exactly sure what kind of wood this is that I'm using here on these but it was just something I found in our scrap wood pile out in the shop and I really loved how these looked because it has that just that raw rough edged 
wood look to it and I thought it would be perfect for the top of this birdhouse. So I just start by putting two on each of the sides and I kind of make sure that I space them evenly and then I'm going to fill the top with just this smaller piece and then to fill in that tiny little gap that I have I decided to go ahead and add this tiny little stick just to give it a little extra something. We really won't see this in the end because we're going to cover this the top of this with some moss. Instead of doing moss on the front side of this one, I thought it would be cute to do moss on the top. And so I just add in a bunch of green and brown moss. And then again, I'll just embellishment, embellish it with a few greenery sprigs and a couple little flowers. <laughs> Okay, I know that sometimes less is more, but after I got the moss on the top of this one and was looking at it, I was like, okay, it just needs a little extra something on the front. So I'm just going to add some moss to just this one side in the corner and then add in a little tiny bit that kind of you know, wraps around the edge with some, and then add in also some greenery stems and a couple little flowers to the front of this. But then I will go ahead and call this one done just because I didn't want to go overboard. I did kind of want to leave this one a little, a little more on the simplistic, simplistic side of things. <laughs> I do think it looks really, really, really cute. I do kind of like the easy, simple style that this one has. Our last little project is going to be a super fun, whimsical set of birdhouses here. And I actually saw these on Pinterest and thought that they would be super fun to recreate. So Michael and I cut all of these birdhouses out on our scroll saw, but we will have this entire kit available for y'all um, on our website. And I will have the link to that um, in the description box down below for y'all. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by painting these and I'm painting the back side. I'm fully covering the back side, fully painting all of the edges, but on the front, I'm only painting part way in because we are going to cover these with some scrapbook paper. Oh, and I am using just white chalk paint here. I think this was Waverly brand chalk paint, but it is a like a pure white. For all of our little accent pieces, I am just staining this, staining them with some Waverly antiquing glaze. And I brushed all of this on and then with a clean cloth, I kind of go back over and sort of wipe it off just to give it a little bit of that wet distressed look and a little extra antique aged look to them. These are the scrapbook papers that I chose for the fronts of our birdhouses. I, I just love green. It's one of my favorite colors, especially in the springtime. So I'm just going to go ahead and trace our birdhouses onto the paper and then I will cut it out. And I'm not too worried here about it being a, a precise fit because I have a little trick for that, which I will show y'all in just a few moments. <laughs>
Now that I have this first piece cut out, I'm going to just set it on top of my birdhouse and then carefully flip it over so my paper doesn't move. And then I will trace out our little um, door and window shapes so that I can also cut those out. And to cut out these little circles, I kind of just poke a hole in the very center and then start cutting cutting from the center outwards just so I make sure I don't really, you know, mess mess this up at all or, you know, go out of the lines. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Now that I have all of our papers cut out, I'm going to go ahead and glue them on and I'm just using some Alleen's all-purpose tacky glue here and I like to use the clear glue because it dries very clear and you don't see it if any kind of seeps out at all. So when I glued this first one, I kind of just spread the glue all around but I didn't brush it on and it did leave some wavy bumpies in, <laughs> in my paper, which I didn't mind too much because it kind of just gave it that rustic look. But for the other ones, I put the glue on and then I spread it all out with a brush and it did give it a lot more even coverage and it eliminated a lot of those wrinkles and bubbles in my paper. For this step, I would recommend using an older brush. You don't want to use one of your good paint brushes for this, even though this glue washes out really well, but that's um, part of the trick is to make sure that you wash your brush immediately. Don't give that glue any time to set up in your brush. So um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and just brush all this glue on and it did eliminate. So you can see in that first birdhouse up there how I got lots of little bubbles. Um, spreading the glue out did eliminate that. It gave us, it gave this a lot smoother, cleaner look or a smoother, cleaner finish to it. Now that all of our papers are on and the glue has had time to fully dry and set up, we're gonna move on to my favorite little trick here. So you can see how the paper is kind of overhanging on the edges of a lot of our birdhouses here. So I am going to take this filing board and I'm just going to file off all of those edges. And it's really important when you do this not to go back and forth, back and forth. You wanna just file in one downward motion with each, um, pass through and you can see here how it cleans up all that excess paper and then it just kind of gives that um, a clean finished look but it also kind of makes the paper look like it was painted on the wood rather than glued on with paper <laughs> i really love this little trick it's a very very effective <laughs> So you can see here what I mean, how it just cleans up all that excess paper and it brings it back to the actual full shape of the wood. So now we're going to go ahead and start gluing on our little accent pieces. And this little window goes on our bigger birdhouse. And I'm just using that Alleen's all-purpose glue to glue this one on. Um, my hot glue gun wasn't heated up yet. The battery died and I was recharging it. And then for our little... Um, I'm not sure what you call these um, shakers, I guess. 
Just our little accent piece for the roof just kind of gives it this extra 3D look. I'm gonna use some wood glue to glue these on. And then the doors for the other two little birdhouses, I think I do end up using just hot glue to do those ones. <laughs> okay, I remember what I did now. <laughs> on our little um, roof accent pieces, I did use a combination of wood glue and hot glue on these. And the, the hot glue just kind of helps, gives it that instant hold so that we can, you know, move on to our next step. Otherwise, we would have to wait for that wood glue to dry, and I'm just too impatient for that. So I will get all these roof put on, our little accent roofs. I I'm not sure what we want to call these. Um, I guess we'll just call them our little accent pieces for the roofs. <laughs> so once those are all put on, I'm going to glue on our doors. And then after the glue is completely set up, I wanted to add some doorknobs to our doors, but I didn't have any like wood beads or anything like that that was, that was small enough for these. So I thought, oh, let's just use some hot glue to create these. So I just put on a small dab of hot glue on each of these to kind of give it that rounded doorknob look. And then once that glue is completely set up, I will go back in and paint it. And I'm just gonna paint them with some black chalk paint. And wood glue paints very, very, not wood glue, hot glue paints up really, really nicely, y'all. That just looks so good. It actually looks like a real doorknob on the door. I love how this turned out. It was a good idea. <laughs> okay, so now let's go ahead and embellish our birdhouses. And I am just going to add a little bit of moss to um, each of these and then a little bit of greenery picks and some flowers. I'm just going to kind of keep this simple and whimsical. So I have these cute tiny little birds that I actually made in one of my molds with hot glue. I just filled the entire mold with hot glue and it created the perfect little um, embellishment here. I didn't really want to get out my epoxy kit so I just thought, thought I would do this quickly and I thought it would be so cute to add these to the birdhouses and I just sort of tucked the little birdie back behind the little nest part to kind of make it look like the bird was actually sitting inside the nest and I just think this came out so cute. I really really love it. One thing I should mention here really quick is that all of these little embellishment pieces, um, all the moss and the little greenery picks, I am hot gluing all of these into place. You don't always see that that's what I'm doing here, but each one of them have been hot glued into place. <laughs> go ahead and attach our wood bases together. This wood base comes in three parts. There's two rounds and then this cute little flower that goes on the top and I am just using a combination here um, of wood glue and hot glue to attach all three of these pieces together. And I did paint these with just some white chalk paint and then I kind of um, sanded all the edges to give it a slight distressed look. You don't actually really necessarily have to use the hot glue on these. You could just use the wood glue and then clamp them all together and let them dry really well. But you know me, I'm just kind of impatient, which is why I use the hot glue because it kind of gives it that instant 
hold and I can just keep moving. I don't have to wait for glue to set up and dry. <laughs> so we'll just go ahead and continue putting all of our little bases together and then we will move on to our next step. After we get all of our pieces assembled, I am going to take these out into the shop and we will drill a hole in the bottom of each birdhouse as well as the top of the base. Then I take some branches from just a tree branch and I do kind of taper the ends a little bit. I just kind of run them across my sander to tape them and that's how we will adhere the birdhouses to the base. I really love these y'all. They turned out so sweet. They're just fun and whimsical. What do y'all think? Well, what do you guys think? Do you like our birdhouse projects that we created today? I sure had fun. They were so much fun for me to create. And as I was creating all of them, I'm like, again, it's gonna be so hard for me to pick a favorite. But in the end, I think, um, Probably these ones right behind me. I think those ones are definitely my favorite of all of them. Which ones were y'all's favorites? You'll have to let me know down in the comments below because I really do love to hear from y'all. Alrighty friends, that is going to wrap up today's episode. This was so much fun. I really enjoyed hanging out with y'all. I enjoyed your company as we created these darling little birdhouses together. They were fun to create. I hope that you guys enjoyed this as well. And I look forward to seeing you all again next week. We are going to jump into something so exciting. Next week, we will be celebrating my one year anniversary here on YouTube with y'all. So I hope to see you all. I hope you will come and celebrate with us. I look forward to seeing y'all again in the next one. Until then, y'all take care, and I will see you soon. Bye. <laughs> well, that one, didn't, that one didn't work out so well, did it? <laughs> didn't I just say that? <laughs> Welcome back to my... <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs>